number three ready. <laughs> I'm going to complain somewhat today and hopefully share things. I want you, the reason the media thing upsets me is because uh, it's not just a matter of news, it's a matter of dishonesty at times. I'm upset right now. I told you guys I bought a new laptop, but we'll talk today. The laptop is okay. It was called HP Pavilion. Of course, after you buy it, then you realize, oh, maybe that's why the price was lower. Uh, and I had to learn a lot of new functions on the laptop, like the little uh, keypad doesn't work correctly. And, you, and I don't mind buying Office Word. When you get a new laptop, you got to get one that has Word in it so you can do your uh, spell check and all. And there's a free Word uh, that you can get legally. It's not bootleg. I forget the name of it, but it's the most prominent uh, office word, you know, like that you can get. And it's deception. Because <laughs> right, I'm writing some of the posts that I'm going to post today. Why is it deceptive, John? It's free, but then they want you to buy the yearly, the, they want you to pay for it, whatever it is. And I just need simple typing. That's all. I don't need to learn new functions. Some words, after you don't buy it after a while, I guess they purposefully have like a virus in it. You say, what do you mean? There are words. I just put the word disappointment right in the text. And if even if you spell like Puerto Rico, I just spelt it, I'm talking, I'm writing about the videos. It doesn't recognize Puerto Rico as a word. And there are actual words that I have to spell, which I know how to spell. But you like spell check because if you spell a word like whatever, you know, the word whatever, if you spell that correctly, you would expect a professional office word to recognize that. And I realized this is a free one I've had now for a month. I had to learn all the, however long I've had. So then that's how it works. If you don't buy their product, they don't recognize words common words. I mean, like the word remember or something like that. You could spell it right and it doesn't recognize it. you got to add it to dictionary. So I realized after I was doing it for a few weeks, that's the gimmick. It's free. It's in your computer. But if you don't buy it, they're going to like not recognize simple words. And what upsets me more is the deception of it. That's what upsets me. It upsets me that they should say up front, we'd prefer you to buy this. And if you don't buy it, our spell check is not going to recognize common words that are in a dictionary. And it's so I add those words. And believe me, these are words that any spell check would recognize, okay? Sometimes when you're doing Bible and theology, you buy a particular word, uh, word just for that because they're words that truly spell check might not existentialism philosophy okay maybe it's not going to recognize it but look a good spell check should let me go off on existentialism I teach I like philosophy and I teach that I've heard it this past week and every time I hear the media use this and I've heard it much this past week uh, Fox News everybody, they said they talk about whether it's new uh North Korea, Irma. I've heard many politicos say it's an existential threat. And I would like one time to ask them, if I was asking as a reporter, you say North Korea uh, is an existential threat, Mr. Newsman? You say uh, Irma is an existential I would say, and what is the difference if you just said it's a threat? There's no difference. And many of them don't know what, even what that word means. But it's very prominent these last few years, an existential threat. <laughs> Existentialism is the philosophy. I told you about Soren Kierkegaard, the Danish philosopher in the 1800s, who was a Christian. And he's considered the father of the philosophy of 
existentialism, eh? at least for the Christian side of it. But existentialism in philosophy, the most simple way to describe it, if you will, is the philosophy of existence. And Kierkegaard, who I've told on, uh, he was a critic of the uh, Danish church because he felt like Christianity at that point in time, apologetics, which I do defense of the faith, he said, but it was getting too intellectual. So we need to have this embrace of God, that we embrace, we exist before him. And of course, Kierkegaard was correct. And, and so existentialism was more or less the reality of our existence. And, we, and so that's fine. There's no difference from the media bobbleheads that are using that term, which I've heard, and because they want to impress. The spell check thing has upset me because I've been dealing with it now for John, just get the regular one. I, I'll have to get the regular one. It's just, you know, how could you not recognize Puerto Rico? And it's spelled right. So I've got to add, the, you know, I'll add the, I've added these words, like com common words, all right? Believe, okay, maybe not that. So don't recognize it, because th there's always a hook. I don't mind paying for it. I was going to download the original. I buy, I buy the, this is, humanity has that in them. Humanity has that in them. You don't find, when we talk about, uh, when you hear me criticize liberalism or conservatism, many, many view themselves as for the justice and the rights of people. And I'll be honest, the only, that only really exists somewhere within the church and within the kingdom. I've seen people honestly believe that they're for the defense of good people. And, and yet I've seen decisions within politics, and those decisions cause damage <laughs> to the people that they say they are for. And I watch that, and then I realize they're hiding behind a cloak of I'm for the underprivileged, I'm for the underclass, but it's a smug cloak where even at times when in politics and media uh, they feel that the cause is so just that they lie to you and that they would even be upset that you survived Irma and that your kids were not killed. They won't say it, but you hear it in their voice. And then what that shows you is, wow, but, but they, this is what we refer to as self-righteousness. I watched a few rock documentaries the last few weeks, and I have some good stuff coming up on the art painting and things. And, and, I, and it's interesting. I like to watch those documentaries. There was one on, uh, I saw Led Zeppelin. Watch that. It's interesting because it's nothing to do with politics. But the the music press out of Britain, England, the, the British invasion, they were super critical of Led Zeppelin. And they just chose critics in the area of art, movies, I don't watch, in the area of entertainment, critics make or break you. You know, my friend Mike, the artist, I'll show you the painting that's coming up. Some of the art he does looks better than... We see these million, million dollar works from famous Renaissance artists. And when you look at some of those works, they're not that great. But it's the name. It's the name. And when you look at some of them, but then even though they're really not that great, some of what they ask for the, some of these works. I'm not saying they're bad artists. But some were Gauguin or Picasso, Rembrandt, whatever.
But once they, once there's it, oh, it's uh, Picasso or whatever. And so what the critics did to Led Zeppelin was the critics didn't like them. Maybe because of the music or whatever. I was a fan of Led Zeppelin. That's why I watched documentaries. But as I'm watching it, it said, but the critics tried to kind of destroy Led Zeppelin, the rock group, because they weren't kowtowing to them. They weren't like, if you don't become friends with the press, the critics, the media, we will destroy you type of thing. And this was in a rock documentary. And then it said, so they got a promoter, but it, they came to the U.S. Look, they hit it big, Led Zeppelin. And, and during the documentary it said, and the critics still did all they could out of Britain to destroy them as a group. And it said in the documentary, but they didn't create them. Because they did not create them, they couldn't destroy them. And you just see that in even that example. And that's what we also see. We see that in society. <laughs> okay, that's what we see. It upsets me when I, when you see me report on, talk about media and all. To, and, and then I see these little examples. I say, no, no, you, you, you have a cloak of, you're for the underdog. You have a cloak of, you're for the righteous. <laughs> I heard a black minister, Democrat, liberal, black minister, a few years ago. And he knew the history of Planned Parenthood with a woman by the name of Margaret Sanger. And Margaret Sanger was one of the most racist human beings, referred to, she said, we must get rid of these black people. And Margaret Sanger held to a belief that's called uh, eugenics. Eugenics was developed, was a science had to do with so-called ethics, and it was developed by a relative of Charles Darwin, okay, famous for the theory of evolution. But eugenics said, maybe if we, as humans, get rid of what we deem the lesser classes or the lesser race of people, if we do something about it, we could advance man, evolution. Say if we just killed off the people that had Down syndrome or there's countries that are still uh, wanting, you know, forced abortions for children that are born with particular disabilities, which is wicked to want that. And there's countries that are proud that they abort the children with disabilities. So... Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, in her writings, also believed that if the black people, particularly in the first uh, experiment, which was New York City, this is the founder now of Planned Parenthood. This was her, this was her belief system. She embraced eugenics. Eugenics also influenced Adolf Hitler to get rid of the, because Hitler, of course, we know for the disaster the, of the Holocaust and the, to his warped mind. But Hitler also uh, killed the disabled and the concept of eugenics. Let's, let's purify the rest. And so this woman, Margaret Sanger, she was the founder of Planned Parenthood and in her writings said things like, if the black people keep reproducing and having these babies, it's going to bring down the white people. This was her belief. This is in her writings. And this was part of her idea of Planned Parenthood. It wasn't initially to provide health care for minorities. It was, if these minorities keep reproducing blacks, so we have to really have a process to abort their children because it's so wicked. So wicked. Now, if you today are in Hillary Clinton during her time of campaigning and all, there, but there are video clips of Hillary Clinton being asked this question. 
and, and said, you're a big supporter of Planned Parenthood, and you've also praised Margaret Sanger. There's audio of this. Hillary Clinton praised this woman, and they asked her what, about what I just said. They said, how can you praise a woman who, in her writings and teachings and belief system, thought that the blacks were just a lesser race, a lesser humanity than whites. And she felt it was her duty to provide abortion because if these blacks overrun the white race, this is what you call the right, right? This is supposed to be considered the Nazi concept, which many liberals are up in arms over. White nationalism, right? And now, and she was asked, Mrs. Clinton, you're so against rightfully Nazis and all, but yet you, you have praised this woman, Margaret Sanger, who believed we need, to, we need to stop the reproduction of the black race because it will overrun the white people of this country. And so we must push abortion to get rid of them. Now, if there was a black liberal Democrat pastor when he finally, many others as well, when they realized this, they said, wait a minute, how could we even be supporting some type of a movement with the founder had this concept? And Hillary Clinton's response was, Margaret Sanger might have had some bad ideas, but I praise Mrs. Sanger for all of the good she has done. Can you imagine somebody? Can you imagine if I, uh, uh, in the area of politics in this country, can you imagine if some conservative praised a person who openly in their writings called for the, uh, uh, we, we gotta slow down the, the black reproduction. So the media <laughs> cloaked in this image of we're for you. No, you're not. You're for what makes you feel like you're a big defender of people. So, this would be number three. You get a little, let's see how I can write today. <laughs>